What a week. What a week. With DJ Fresh. Fresh. Yo, what is up? What is happening? No, you are not at the incorrect place. We're right here. Of course, it's Wow, What a Week. Regular programming just slightly changed. My name is Lula Odiva. I put everything after the Divas. I've been on the show before. And this week, we're doing things a little bit different. Lirinali, a celebrity guest. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, look, I already fucked that up. This is Wow. Yeah. What a week. What a week. Yeah. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. Awesome. So, recently, recently we spoke to Timo Touch, a person that many people were requesting to be on the show. And this week, wow, what a week is speaking to someone else that has also been on that high request list. Someone that we have been so, so eager to question and even grill a little bit. I want to end by that. Someone keep walking. DJ Fresh, baby. Po, 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 po. How are you doing? Lula. Fresh. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you so much for allowing me to be the one that wraps up this year's uh, season of Wow, What a Week. And to let me be the one to ask you some questions. In, in fact, the team suggested this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I told them, on condition you're available to interview me, then I'll do it. Why did you choose me? You know I love you, dude. I'm uh, like, I've been mm. your biggest fan since... Before you even started radio, you <laughs> were a cool kid. Yeah. You know, from the time your mom brought you to 5FM to come in and shadow me. Yeah. I knew there was something special about you, oh, so... And you've said this since that time. But uh, yeah. today is not about me. It definitely is about you. And um, while we were doing the, the research for today, I found out quite a bit of things about you that I didn't know before last night. So I found out that you're the eldest amongst all your siblings, first uh, and yes. foremost. Yeah. Did you find yourself being like a deputy parents of sorts let me tell you about how our family dynamic was mm. so my sister was born i think when i was six okay my brother was born when i was 12 13 but the way things happened was because i went to boarding school when mm. i was 13 mm. i never really got a chance to spend quality time with my siblings mm. So my little brother, for instance, when he was six, his friend Chico went to boarding school in Grahamstown. So Tsepo was like, I also want to go to boarding school. Yo. So Tsepo at the age of seven was in boarding school. Mm. My sister literally straight into high school was at boarding school in Swaziland. So I've literally never spent more than four weeks with any of my siblings when we were kids. Yo. And 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 it's 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 unfortunate. Mm. Uh, but you know that's 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 how it happened just the, and now how is your guys' relationships and the dynamics because you guys can make time for each other you, you know right? what it's i think had we had a solid foundation from childhood mm. we'd probably be closer in our adulthood but i mean we have a family group we chat and we catch mm. up and everything else but like i said but because we lived past each other literally because mm. i was in boarding school straight out of boarding school i did national service for a year where i wasn't staying at home mm. then i was at varsity for two years mm. and then when I was 20, I moved to South Africa. Yo. You know what I mean? And so, who, who was the favorite child? That's the other thing. Because we've never been in one place for more than a month, yeah. I cannot turn around and say there was a favorite. Uh, but I suspect it's my little brother, though. Because he got away with more shit than any of us. <laughs> really? And, and because I put him through high school, mm. uh, and he went through three schools because he was naughty. Damn. You know? Dude, you it's have no idea. I have you have no idea. Dog. So, so uh, I mean, the one school he, he went to was uh, Nest Putting in, uh, in Four Ways. Okay. It's a great school. Mm. And I remember once getting a call that, please come pick him up. Um, he's been suspended or was he expelled at the time um, because they had taken one of the teacher's little tiny cars and relocated <gasps> no, it. No, he was one of those kids that moved it. I actually yeah. saw about this on social media. <laughs> oh my God. So, 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 you know, when you become the breadwinner while your parents mm -hmm. are still the breadwinners. Mm -hmm. So he became a responsibility. So, and then we found him another school in um, I mean, Clugsdorp. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's in Conrad's. And I remember again getting a call. Um, you need to come, your little brother, and the entire boarding house sneaked out. There was a festival in Clugstop. And all the kids sneaked out. Like, all of them sneaked out. Mm. And all of them were suspended. 
was it expelled? So eventually I told my parents, you yeah. need to take this kid yes. back to bots, found him in school there, because I'm like, you will watch him. Mm. I'm not going to do it. But you know what, though? Like I said, it's it's, it's all love, though. Yeah. 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 So speaking with uh, speaking on the notes of like family and relationships, I want to talk about how your, your mom studied abroad. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I learned about you. Yeah. Um, what was going through your mind where when it goes long, you can see that other kids, their moms come to these family meetings. Mm -hmm. Their mom are there every day, but yours is overseas. Well, how how was that for you? Again, because mm. I was at boarding school, so mm. it's not like I'm seeing my parents all oh, the time. Oh, you weren't missing. So, so mm. at the age of 12, 13, I was sent to boarding school, which was literally a ten minute walk from my house. But I understand why they sent me to boarding school, because that's where I actually grew and became independent. Mm. Had I not gone to boarding school, I wouldn't know how to wash my socks. I wouldn't know how to do my own laundry. Mm. Uh, making my bed would not be an option. Yeah. But boarding school teaches you all of that. And you're in a boarding house with a bunch of boys from different backgrounds. Yeah. But because there'll be kids you look up to, there's a role modeling that happens. Mm. And if the kid you look up to is the neat kid, you start being a neat kid yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think I needed boarding school. Yeah. So my mom left for the US when I was in grade 10 um, to go and study. And I remember at the time I had abandonment issues because that same year, my best friend relocated to Norway. Yo, there was a lot going on. No, Everybody's no. leaving. In grade 10, yep. I, I, literally, I, I literally went... I was actually suicidal at the time. Really? Um, because of the abandonment issues I was, I was feeling. Uh. And I remember on the day my best friend relocated to, the, um, to Norway, to, to, to Norway mm. I found my girlfriend with one of the senior boys in one of the classrooms. Are you joking? I swear to God. Oh, my God. I swear... To God. I mean, well, they were snogging, but I mean, it's like, like, it's not like we were kids having sex at the time. Mm, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Mm. But that's actually when I decided myself that, you know what? Fuck bro code. Everyone is fair game. Damn. And I'm saying this now. Fuck. So, I'm not about the bro code. I'm done with the bro code. I'm <laughs> done. Would you date one of your best friend's exes? You know, sometimes your best friend meets someone mm -hmm. that God is trying to draw into your orbit. You know what I mean? So who are we to question God saying, son, this is a sign. <laughs> exactly. So, so. Like I said, dude, I decided at the age of 15, mm. fuck bro, bro mm. code. Yeah. Unless, you, unless you're married, then it's a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But fuck bro code. And speaking of God and religion, I want to talk about how you went to Bible school. And I heard that it wasn't a bed of rosaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're funny. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> no, so, so I'm raised Roman Catholic. Yeah. And we, we had catechism classes, mm -hmm. but there was also Sunday school. Mm. But I asked a lot of questions all the time, and I was called problematic. Because, for instance, for me, it didn't make sense that we're told that if you're not Roman Catholic or Christian, then you're a heathen. Yeah, you have no right to for, passage. Um, exactly. You're going to hell, mm. in essence. But I was raised with friends who were Muslim. I had uh, Hindu friends. Mm. I had friends of the Baha'i faith. Mm. So in my mind, as a child, it didn't make sense that... So my friend, who's the nicest kid mm. in the playground, is going to hell because we don't read from the same hymn book. Mm. So for me, it didn't make sense. So those are the questions I used to ask. As so, a child, in, as, in, as a in child, Bible it didn't make sense. Yeah. Like, like why are this? Like th this friend of mine is not going to hell. Mm. He's a good child. So at that stage, I started understanding that a good human being is a good human being, and the person going to church is not necessarily a good human being. Mm. So often, I judge people based on what they show me not on what their politics might be, mm. the color of their skin might be, mm. uh, what they believe in or not believe in. Dude, you might believe the earth is flat. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're not worthy of being within my my circle. Yeah. You know, so 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 that, that's what it was. Yeah. You still wear a rosary. Do yes. you Do you still, are you still like very much a, a believer? Do you go to church? I've always said, I don't have a problem with God. I have a problem with his fan club. <laughs> Because his fan club... The way you put that, Luen. <laughs> his, his fan club, Batina. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I don't like how 
certain people believe they're all high and mighty mm. simply because I go to church and you don't. It doesn't make you a better Sex. human being. It doesn't mean that uh, you're not going to hell simply because you go to church. Mm. But I wear a rosary because my mom gifts me rosaries all the time. And like I said, I still have a relationship with a big G. Yeah. But it's just religion. organized religion for yeah. me is problematic. Do you pray? I pray every single day. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got into my like recent relationship, uh, we prayed at midnight. We prayed at three in the morning. You and know, I'll pray why, when I wake up also. Why did you tell me Why got through saying? Um, I've been told that 12 literally, uh, he's paying the most attention. Ah, but she knows that. Hey, well, Shasha, hey. No, no, no. L listen, um, you know, I was, I was, I was told that there are times uh, that certain people believe is the best time to mm. pray. You know what I mean? And I subscribed to that. And did you find it was true? I'll never know also because mm. I work so hard. Sometimes I'm not sure mm. if it's my hard work that's mm. opening a door. Thank you. I don't know if it's my goodwill that's opening a door. Yeah. But I know for a fact that I've got guardian angels out there watching over me mm. all the time. Yeah. Like there's so much evil in this world. Yeah. And I believe I've got protectors out there. Some are human and some are not. I love that. Yeah. So Uncle Fish, what would you say was the most challenging period of your life mentally, especially during your teen years? Because mm. earlier on you, you were talking about abandonment issues. Your mom left, your bestie left. Mm. It was tough. But how did you overcome that? Because you know, you were also in your suicide bag. You know what? I think... And I've spoken about this before. Mm. I read an interview uh, in a drum magazine. They were interviewing Ray Piri mm. of Stimela. May his soul rest in peace. Oh, okay, yeah. And he spoke about how, and like he was like a megastar in the 80s. And he spoke about how he often feels loneliest despite the fact that he's got all this fame, all this glory, all these awards, that mm. often he feels alone. And that he's actually a recluse. Mm. And I felt that a lot, that I'm in a boarding house with a bunch of some of the coolest boys I've ever known to date. But often I felt alone in the boarding house. Mm. Often I felt like I don't have friends in the boarding house. So you've got all these people around you. You've got all these people that you chat to all the time, but you still feel alone. And so for me, the toughest mental challenge I went through was probably from the age of 15 to 17, where also... I knew that I'm done with high school soon and they expect me to be a lawyer. But I also started DJing. Eesh. So I was actually at a crossroads before I got to the crossroads where I know leaving high school means Please. bigger decisions need to be made. Mm. And already I knew that this law thing is not going to work. I want to be a lawyer, but I don't ever want to be a lawyer. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I get you. So, so it, was, it, it was a tough period. But the reading that Ray Piri interview mm. actually reminded me that because there's people around you doesn't mean you're not going to feel lonely. And it, it just gave me pers a different perspective. Yeah. And that's when I actually started working a bit harder, even on my schoolwork. Dude, grade eight, I was like a C, D, and E student. <laughs> and by my trick? Um, averaging B's and, yes. and maybe A minuses. Like the distinction, Yana. You know, I mean, I've mean, got two distinctions in, yeah. hi in history and geography. Yeah. And, but, like I'm saying, it's, it's yeah, that's, yeah, that's the period I went through. Another thing that happened is that she mm. became a dad. Yeah. Which is something I also learned as we were doing research for, yeah. for, for this interview. What, were you 19? Um, we fell pregnant when I was 1920. And... You, you know, <laughs> Let me know, like the moment you find out, like when 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 Renee t tells you, Hore, listen, mm. and it's you. no, no, Renee is my daughter. Oh, yes, your baby mama is. Um, Tebuko. Tebuko tells you, hey, Hore. So she was doing her a trick when she fell pregnant. So and when are you are a year after I, high I literally school? just finished. I, okay. I, I'm literally a year after out of high school, mm -mm. and I remember we were careless once, dude. Mm. Once, mm. like once. One time, dude. The one time where we didn't have rubbers. And you saying pull out, Ganti. If I see you to pull out, I was like, I will be fine. <sighs> I think at the time there was even a thing about if you drink a lot of water. <laughs> 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 there was a time where there was, we were told if you, like, if you drink a lot of water. <laughs> like there were many things you were meant to be able to do mm. to make sure you don't fall pregnant. And I remember um, Renee's mom saying to me, um, my period isn't here. And then she started getting morning sickness. And I remember there was a Shabba Ranks concert 
Okay. And we went to this concert. And she was a huge uh, Shabba Ranks fan, so we were standing near the front. And then morning sickness kicked in during the concert. Oh, no. And she had to literally go throw up under the stage. That's when I knew that oh, no. fuck, we're fuck. pregnant. Yeah. And I remember we went, there's a doctor we went to see about a termination. Okay. And he told us this is what it's going to cost you. So because I was a working DJ already at the time, money wasn't an issue. I mean, we were gigging every weekend. Yeah. I mean, I was what? I was doing law. I was, I was in law school already at the time. But I remember we went to this doctor and he told us, no, you know, bring X amount and I'll uh, look after you guys. Mm. And I raised the money. The following week, we went back to the doctor um, to do our termination. Yeah. But as we sat in the waiting room, we had an honest conversation. Like, do we really want to do this? Yikes. And you were actually considering keeping the baby as well? We never thought about keeping the baby. All we knew is um, you are in your final year of high school. Do you want to drop out? Yo. You know what I mean? And we were both shit scared, mm. literally. Mm. And we sat in the waiting room waiting for the procedure. And we literally changed our minds in, the, in that uh, waiting room. That you know what? If the good Lord wants us to have a child, we want to have a child. And your parents, her parents, like, what is the reception oh. of, like, now you've made the decision, now you have to tell everyone? I remember walking into my folks' room. Mm. My mom was, or I think she was reading a book or whatever. And I walked in and I sat on the bed. It's like, mom, we need to talk. <sighs> and But I couldn't articulate uh, that there was a problem. And then I remember lying back and <laughs> sighing. And then she's like, you guys are pregnant, aren't you? What, she called it? <laughs> she's like, you guys are pregnant, aren't you? And she's like, don't worry, I'll, I'll talk to you, dad. How does she know? Because it was difficult for me to talk to her. Mm. But I've never had a difficulty chatting to my mom. Mm. You know what I mean? But she could tell that this child is trying to talk to me, but it's not coming out. So it happened and... And your dad gets in the chat, how does he react? She told him, I was like, I'm going back to varsity. You'll, you'll deal with your man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I went, I went back to Rez. I went back to Rez and uh, she, she dealt with it. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and mom has saved me a lot often mm. where there's shit I can't tell my dad. Mm. And she steps in and says, don't worry, I'll, I'll take care of it. It's interesting that we're talking about your very first child because I have a very beautiful voice note that I'd like to share with you. You do? Please let me know if you can hear this. Uh... One of the people that I hold dear to my heart is my dad, Tadusi Kwani. And one of the one of the great memories I have of us speech? together is at the daddy daughter again. dance. Okay. okay. One of the people that I hold dear to my heart is my dad, Tadusi Kwani. And one of the one of the great memories I have of us together is at the daddy daughter dance. That was such a cool moment because we were dancing together, and that was just so cool. And um, another one that I just remembered was us watching Finding Nemo together in the Jeep. I believe I was 10 years old at that time. Yeah. And, you know, I just love how he loves his kids so much. And he'd do anything for them. He's actually taught me a lot as a parent. And I'll always hold these memories and these teachings to my heart. Mm -hmm. I love him so much. That's Renee, my, yeah. my firstborn. How do you feel listening to that? So our church has a daddy-daughter daddy dance every year. Okay. So there was a time um, she was visiting a couple of years ago. So it was me and uh, the two girls basically at this dance. Mm. And we had a lot of fun. Oh. And so my Jeep has like a DVD player, PlayStation and screens. So, so whenever I drove uh, Renee around, this mm. is like 18 years ago, yeah. almost. Um yeah, she'd sit at the back and watch a movie mm -hmm. or something uh, while I'm doing my errands. So, Aww. so she's a special child. Yeah. And one thing I appreciate about my kids is they've never been problem kids at all. They've never been. They greet. They say please. They say thank you. They are kind. They listen. Mm -hmm. And and. Yeah, I think I've been blessed with the most incredible kids, dude. Yeah. I want to talk about how you were a kid, raising a kid. How crazy was that for you? Did you have enough help? So, so, so relocating to Joburg, mm -hmm. Renee Loe was one. Oh. So she was pretty much raised more by her mom and her grandparents. Mm. 
because I was this side hustling. Working. But at her 21st birthday, I told her that one of the reasons I worked as hard as I did, one of the reasons I achieved as much as I did, was because I understood that there's a child to put through school. Mm. There's a child to educate. Mm. There's a child that has now become my reason to work harder. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so... So yeah, man, she she's actually responsible for a lot of my work ethic. Yeah. Because I understood that I can't fuck this up. Yeah. So Linda, you know. Yo, do you? Yo. The time you're twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sis. and then I want to talk about the relationship with you and the mother of your first child. Yeah. Um. Obviously, it came to an end. How did yeah. you cope with all of that? And it's weird because we broke up the same the first year that I came here. Was it distance? Um. There was. It was a lot of things. The yeah. things I don't want to get into it because it's in the past and it's Fair. done. Fair. But one thing I promised myself is whether or not we get along there's still a child here. Mm. So my attitude about what's in the best interest of a child, I learned when I was 20. That it doesn't matter how much of our relationship fucks out, mm. there's a child. Involved what now. works for this child? Mm. And how can we make sure that this child does not feel any animosity that might exist? And also if there's animosity, why must it last beyond however long animosity is meant to last for? Mm. You know what I mean? I don't hang on to shit. Yeah. You know, whether you've wronged me or vice versa, don't hang on to shit, especially if there's a child involved. Mm. Yeah, You're a proud father of five children yeah. and you mentioned a little bit earlier that you're so grateful that they have these qualities, mm. these great qualities if mm. they've been problem kids. Are you proud of yourself for instilling those values in them? I'm not going to take the credit. Full, <laughs> full credit. It, it helps when you have uh, mothers of the children that also have similar values mm. and i think that's probably uh, what attracts you to a person it, it you know beyond the physical and the mental and anything else sometimes do we believe in the same shit mm. do we uh, you know do we prescribe what is it uh, what's the english word i'm looking for prescribe to do we, do we have the same values, man? Yeah. Do we, do our, is our worldview the same? Mm -hmm. uh, is how we should raise kids the same? Are we reading from the same hymn book mm -hmm. when it comes to how to raise a child? Mm. And whether you're raising a child religiously or not, it doesn't matter. Are you raising a good person? Mm. You know what I mean? And and for me, that's that, like, that is so important, that you are raising a good person. Yeah. How did you get good at co-parenting? Again, what's in the best interest of this child? Okay. Like I said, I learned that when I was 20, dude. From, from the age of 20, I understood that forget what you believe yeah. or what you feel yeah. or how angry you're feeling. Uh, we, we have a common goal and we are stuck together for the rest of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's in both our interests that we're not fighting. It's like the life of Pi. Yeah. You know, even if you're stuck with a, a tiger on a rowboat, it's been both our interest that this boat doesn't tip over. Both of us, we can't tip it over. Exactly. I love that analogy. So, so yeah, man. How how is co-parenting going? It's 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 amazing. Hey. Yeah. So, so for instance, with my marriage, obviously we separated after seventeen, eighteen years. Yeah. And but we still stayed under the same roof for three years. Do you know that I only recently moved out? Kikupo, explain because I saw this on social media and it seems so unrealistic, mainly because we're black. Uh, and number two, you come from that generation where that thing is not normal. You know, the problem is, yeah. I, th I think because we think divorce means hatred or divorce means we are fighting and there's so much animosity that I want to kill you, we don't understand when people decide we're going to be amicable here. It doesn't make sense. And for a lot of uh, immature minds, amicable to them means they must still be sleeping with one another. Yo, that's a fact, eh? You know what I mean? Like, come on, to me, one, three that, years. Oh, they, they live under the same roof. They must mm -hmm. still, you know what I mean? And, and, and it, it doesn't mean that. It just means we're mature enough to understand that, yes, it's over, but there is still minds little minds to raise mm. there's still little minds to mold so we lived under the same roof for three years dude damn and and you know i had my own little room it, it helps also when you have a big house <laughs> you know y'all heard that what <laughs> if, you, if you're gonna divorce and you want to co-parent in another co no, no, no no if you want a nest it's called nesting oh maybe it's a nesting it's called nesting where <laughs> we've broken up but we're gonna live under the same roof and one i wasn't in a hurry to move out 
mm. because it wasn't like a pack your bags and get out situation. Mm. Or, but I knew that at some stage I would need to move out. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I'm the one who's busy. I'm the one who's always on the road. So I knew that I'd need to move out in, in, mm. eventually. And a part of me regrets taking three years to move out because moving out has almost allowed me to refind myself. Mm. Because now you are in your own space. Now when the kids visit, you do the cooking. Yeah. You look after the kids. You, it's, 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 it's like going back to boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what it feels like. Mm. But um, I, I wish I'd moved out earlier. Why is that? Because mm. now when the kids visit, it's me and them. There's no, uh, mama, I need this. Mama, where are my socks? It's just me and them. Mm. So I'm actually able to spend better quality time with them in the absence of their mom. And not in a bad way. Yeah. But sometimes you do need time with your kids just so that you can better understand them within your context mm. and not within a family home context or mom is in the next room context. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm at the lightest I've ever been. You seem so happy. Dude, I'm at the lightest like, I've been in the longest time. Yeah. And and it's it's just, it's, it's it's amazing. I'm really happy that you're feeling like that. I'm yeah. fresh. You deserve it, man. So this next question I want to ask, I wish I could ask my dad, right? So, okay. So I'm really, really happy that I can ask you. Her dad was the legendary Eddie Zondi, yeah. if you don't know. And exactly, because he was a public figure and so sure. are you. Mm. But you have kids. Sure. And they feel like they on TV, on mm. posters. Like, how do you handle them finding out certain things about you that you probably would have told them at a later stage or not at all, but they're seeing it on social media? You know what? Unfortunately, when you're raising kids within the industry, mm. um, you need to make a call about what can I tell them now and what can I wait before, oh. you know, what can I wait before telling them? Yeah. And and unfortunately, with the shitstorm that myself and Euphonic went through, mm-hmm. uh, we had to tell them that, listen, guys, there's a shitstorm coming and um, you will read this, you will read that. And this is the context. This is what you need to understand. And, and unfortunately, when we choose this industry, mm-hmm. we need to be cognizant of the fact that you're choosing this industry for your entire family, oh. for everyone. And it's in, it's, you know, it's in your interest that those that don't understand the industry, explain to them. Mm. They'll read things or they'll see, for instance, something as simple as if you're an actor, mm-hmm. because you see me in a series, it doesn't mean I'm getting paid. It doesn't mean I'm rich. Doesn't mean it, I'm doesn't, it doesn't mean all of a sudden I am Mr. Black Tax. Mm. And a lot of us don't take the time to explain to our relatives or to our family that within this industry, this is how things work. Mm. So for instance, Lifika A is eight. And I'm slowly teaching him the patience of understanding why when people ask for pictures or whatever else, why I do it Mm. and why I feel I have to do it. Mm. And he's slowly becoming patient about it because he used to hate it. Really? He used to hate it. He used to say, Dad, uh, you know, please may we go to the arcade. Mm. Go to the arcade. He's like, but please promise me we're not going to take pictures with people. Then now I must explain to him why I do what I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it doesn't help that now when I go to his school, his classmates are asking for autographs. Mm, Because it's like, come on, Dad. So so you need to constantly uh, explain and explain and explain. So, so I was just told that your son just walked in. Uh, yeah, Tato is here. Yeah, shout out to Tato. What's up, my dude? <laughs> it doesn't mean now I have to govern my uh, answers. Uh, uh, uh. As am I. <laughs> <laughs> and so when when the negative stuff on social media come out, yeah. because of, obviously you, you've you acquainted your kids with the industry and what it mm, comes with, mm. how difficult was that conversation? Because the, the allegations were so serious and mm. so as like as a man sure. you know when I, you wouldn't do this you wouldn't mm. do that mm. you have a daughter you know sure. what I mean? and now mm. you have to explain to that same daughter or these, mm. how difficult was that conversation because this is not just like explaining what i have to take a selfie it's deep you know there's law related you, you know what it is mm. it's you need to explain at a level that they will understand but you don't necessarily need to get into any detail mm-hmm. as long as the basics are this is what happened. This is what didn't happen. Mm. And then after that, just give updates in terms of if something goes to court, mm. this is what happened in court. Mm. But I made it clear from the get-go that uh, this is bullshit. And if it goes to court, we'll beat this thing in court. You don't have to worry about it. 
But I even went as far as, I remember we did a lie detector test. I was actually getting um, to that. Yeah. No, no, we did a lie detector test just so that there's also something in writing to give peace of mind to family members that might not have the peace of mind. That, that's how far we were willing to go. Yeah. In fact, uh, we would like to challenge that witch to a lie detector test. <laughs> Kikobabuta, that light detector test, was mm. it like, uh, did they ask you to do it or you volunteered? Like, you were like, listen, you need the closure and you feel like... The thing friend. is, we were working with a, um, what are they called? Reputation management company. Right. And I think they also wanted it for their own peace of mind. Mm -hmm. That we don't want to represent mm. people who are lying. And, and I understood, you know what I mean? Mm. That you want to make sure that you're dealing with people that have fully disclosed everything. Mm. And, and that's, why, that's why we did it. Yeah. yeah. So that time was really, really tough. It right? was. I mm. mean, you lost out on so much. Like mm, so many yeah. bags. And like lots of bags. Lots of things. Like millions of rands millions. of bags. Yeah. Have, you, like, have you made peace with what has happened? Are you over it? The thing is, the wise part of me has moved on, but the petty part of me refuses to. The move. ego, the ego, still there. It's not even ego. You don't think? It's just I'm fucking petty. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes I'm petty against my better judgment. Mm. You know, mm. and 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 so I'm constantly fighting that. That, you know, every court battle that we've won. Yeah. I've been tempted to go into social media and gloat about it. Mm. But also, I wasn't raised like that. You know what I mean? Mm. That's why you don't see me posting where I live, what I drive, mm. what watch I have on, what shoes I'm wearing. Mm. Because I wasn't raised like that. You know? And, 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 and for me, because it's a serious matter, gloating about it, for me, would almost trivialize the bigger battle. Yeah. Because there's a bigger battle here. You know? And, and, and I remember... You know, at the time we, we, we released our media statement mm. that it's unfortunate that GBV is being weaponized to settle whatever scores have been settled. And, and is that your phone? Yeah, it is. Okay. Pardon me. She's very popular, guys. <laughs> and, you know, as we peeled the layers away mm. as things were happening, when you start realizing that a lot of things have been orchestrated, uh, where a lot of uh, a fake account has been started to say, yeah, nah, me, this happened to me, or to uh, lend credence to something. It, it, it was that deep. It was at that level yeah. that, that that shit was deep. And unfortunately, I believe, um, especially the NGO or the NPO that were uh, backing this, mm. uh, this woman, I suspect they needed a victory with some big names. Oh. But I don't think they knew that they were betting on someone who's actually lying. Mm. Or someone that has actually allegedly lied about something like that before. Hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. And because of that, obviously they needed to throw the kitchen sink and everything else behind it. So that it becomes a heavy case that can be dealt with. Then we get our victory and we have our, you know... These are the, 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 the Goliaths that we managed to slay. Mm. And unfortunately, like I said, you know, when you bet on a horse that's going to lose, it's all for nothing. You're throwing money into, you know, a bucket with a hole. Yeah. And, and, and that's what it became. And you know what annoyed me the most? Because mm. I remember we were told, okay, the NPA are going to open a case. Or they should open a case. But we're waiting for the investigating officer. And I remember thinking, you know, this thing is actually so simple. If you subpoena our phone records. Easily. If you subpoena our phone records and her phone records, you will see that we've never been in the same place together, ever, 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 in our entire lives. Did you even know this? What? Uh, did you know? We've never met. Like, ever, ever, ever. You know what I mean? And why wasn't the subpoenas and stuff done to quicken the process? Because I think there's, you must go through a process, you must take statements, okay. you must do this, you must mm. do that. And for me, it was actually so simple. Based on technology alone, you could close this thing. Subpoena phone records that will show where we were when, where she was when. Never, ever have the two met. Yeah. It's actually that simple. <clears throat> it's that simple. But it's never been done. Because yeah. it's not in the interest of the narrative to get to the bottom of this. 
Because if it was in the interest of the narrative to get to the bottom of this, it would have long been done. Yeah. Even Prime Media could have done that. It's a billion rand company. If they wanted to get to the bottom of this and dispel or, you know, have this narrative unravel, they could have done that. Mm. But they didn't. They pitched out. Yikes. So, so yeah. And, and, and speaking about, like, how some people pitched out, there were, like, a... Like everybody kind of jumped onto this bandwagon mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. that vele, vele, mm -hmm. vele. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised by some people? Human beings will never surprise me. Mm. Human beings are fickle. Human beings are pathetic. Human beings are bandwagoners. Uh, whatever is the in thing right now, a lot of people will jump onto. And you also realize that for some people, that's all they're waiting for. All they're waiting for is to hear that, oh, okay, Lula fucked up, huh? Like, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 we knew. Yeah. yeah who did she think she was? Mm. Uh, doing a, mid sh a midday show at, at Y. So nothing surprises me. Like, nothing surprises me. And, and, you know, I've always understood that human beings will betray you. You know, the people that you've even helped build, mm. the people that you've literally turned into millionaires with doors you've opened for them, are the same people who never pick up a phone. Um, and say, are you okay? Have your kids eaten? Do your kids have food? Have you managed to pay your bond? Are you okay? And that's that's what I've learned, that human mm. beings are fickle. Sure. You know? So I want to change a little bit of But that. also, human yeah. beings are also very selfish. Uh, human beings are about themselves often. But what can I get out of this? Gain from it. What can I gain from this person? What can I gain from this situation? Mm. What can I gain from the fact that uh, a fresh and euphonic um, have this misfortune. Mm -hmm. How can I make it work for me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and hence I say to you, from the age of 15, I've generally had the attitude that actually bro code is actually bullshit. Because the minute someone has an opportunity to either stab you in the back mm -hmm. uh, or even jump in bed with your woman, they'll do it. They'll do it. And are you still heartbroken about this whole thing? I'm not heartbroken about it because it has afforded me opportunities that I might not have taken had it not happened. Really? You know what I mean? Mm. We've, you know, managed to build a studio with my partner, uh, Shauna S.A. Yeah. We're in studio all the time making music. You know, I've dropped an EP, I've dropped an album, I've dropped, um, you know, tons of singles over the last three years. Mm. I've ha I have that time. I love that. Uh, you know, I'm starting a farming project in Botswana. Had all of this happened, I would not have had that opportunity. So you see this as a silver lining of sorts? It's not even a silver lining, man. I think it's... You have different seasons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, your time for harvest came, winter came, and now it's time to retill the land because you're going to harvest and reap even, uh, you know, bigger, bigger, bigger yields than before. I love that. So, so I'm not going to play victim or, or sit and feel sorry for myself. Mm. Dude, I don't feel sorry for myself. I, you know, there's, there's a saying, if you're going through shit, keep going. Mm. If you're going through hell, keep going. I don't sit around and ask, you know, why am I going through this? I'm going, and and I remember we, you know, we we we'd laugh about this with Temba, often about how, you know, with all that we've been through, but never once were we suicidal, never once did we feel we need to take our lives. Like it's over. No, dude, I I don't I don't I view every setback as an opportunity to either rebirth yourself. Reevaluate the way you do things, yeah. reevaluate the company that you keep. But it's always an opportunity to keep moving. I've been in this industry for 30 years. It's not by mistake. There's another saying nothing great was found by mistake, mm -hmm. nothing great was achieved by mistake. Okay, maybe toasted bread. Someone <laughs> dropped bread on a, a, a flame. Yeah. But nothing great happens by mistake, dude. I'm in this industry for 30 years because I'm intentional about every single thing that I do. I'm still gigging every weekend because I'm intentional about um, how I do this career, how I DJ, how I carry myself, how I endear myself to people, how I remain either relevant, memorable or impactful. A lot of us don't do that. A lot of us are literally living day to day. How many of us wake up and say, these are my goals for today? And at the end of the day, say, did I smash Smashed my goals? Hmm. A lot of us don't do that. We're literally existing or not living. Hmm. I refuse to exist. Yeah. I, I really appreciate your resilience and that strong mind. It's very, very, very dope. So I want to change gears a little bit. I'll start negative, no. 
Okay. So I want to play you another voice note because Jeez. let's have a listen to this. Uh, right now, eventually, he was given an opportunity by the Mutsona government. Um, no, I think you started in the middle. Uh, to teach, uh, this is the edited vi- uh, voice note that I was sent. Oh, okay. That's my dad. Uh, yeah, that's your. Th- th- this is your dad. Uh, right now, eventually, he was given an opportunity by the Mutsona government here uh, to teach uh, people. Um, the artists, artists, and they teach us artists. So he toured the entire Botswana. Mm. Uh, he toured the entire Botswana, and in each place he went, he donated a lot of money, even here in, in, in Makale. Uh, he's donated a lot. So that your your father is not just interested, he has not been interested in ensuring that your welfare, the welfare of his family, is in fact dedicated for. But he has a deep love for assisting men. We, as you know, I have done a lot of mind power uh, training myself. He has assisted me. Mm. In visiting uh, even in India when I was 10 and 17, I learned a lot there. He assisted me in visiting uh, Zambia. He assisted me in visiting KwaZulu Natal, etc., etc. Yeah, so that he's such a powerful father, a father that. Um, uh, I guess you guys, you will inherit his deep love for men. I don't know whether you have anything that you, uh, you have anything that you would like to, to know, but all in short, he's, he's such a loving uh, parent of yours, a loving first born for us, etc., etc. So I guess you... You have learned a lot from him. You will also continue with that uh, heritage. Thank you very much, oh. Korean. Bye bye. That's my pops. He's 83 years old. No. Uh, yeah, incredible yeah. man. Yeah. Incredible man. In fact, one of my obsessions with especially just social justice mm. and empowering people and doing the right by people, I learned from him. You know what I mean? He's, he's always been that guy that, you know, what are you doing for the next person? Mm-hmm. What are you doing to empower the next person? And, and, and because he's, he's all about upgrading yourself all the time. I mean, uh, that dude, for the last 15 years now, yeah. he probably reads a book a week. Really? Yeah. Like, he's that dude. So I remember when he turned 70, I sent him on a pilgrimage, like a retreat, rather, to, to India. So he went, like... For a week, he was in India. It was like a, I think it was a no noise retreat or something weird like that. Yeah. With the meditating and le- it was just. So he's that he's that dude. Oh. And yeah. what, what's your relationship with him like now, as he's getting older? He sa- he sounds like he adores you. You know what? Our relationship is not as close as it could be mm-hmm. because I think a lot of opportunities were missed in my teen years. Mm-hmm. Uh, because in my teen years where I needed him the most, he was busy with a political career. So we never really got to bond bond. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and weirdly, I'm trying to fix that with my kids now, mm-hmm. that I've been so busy that I think I've missed a lot of milestones and opportunities where I could have been closer with my own kids. So it's now in hindsight that I'm trying to fix it because I realized that I'm not necessarily breaking the cycle, the cycle yeah. of being so busy that you're not spending quality time with your with your kids. So so it's 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 never too late, mm. but just try arrest it before it becomes late. Yeah. Or try arrest it be- before it becomes, uh, you know, such a big gap between you and the kids that you can never retrieve that uh, that relationship. Yeah. It's so it's so important. So. Yeah. He also mentioned a, a lot of the work that you do in Botswana, yeah. how you help people. I want to mm. talk about DBS and why you chose to 
you know, pursue this project in Botswana and not sure. here. Okay, so basically, uh, Department of Broadcasting Services and Bots mm -hmm. is like the equivalent of the SABC here. Oh, okay. So I started my radio career there 31 years ago. So the station where I started my career, RB2, was turning 30 last year. Okay. So we did a whole proposal that RB2 is turning 30, and my, I've been 30 years in radio. So let's do a nationwide tour celebrating the radio station. And then we did a proposal, we submitted it. They're like, no, man, let's do this with the entire broadcaster. So we mm. literally went to 51, 52 towns and villages, literally just showcasing untapped talent. So, you know, Lula is a poet or she sings or she dances, yeah. but she's never really had time in the sun. So we literally, you know, took a, a literally a, a rig, a truck, put sound in there and we went to different towns, villages. Uh, we did mini concerts with, you know, the different kids from those towns and villages, broadcasted live on radio, two radio stations, broadcasted live on TV, uh, recorded tracks with these kids. We did workshops with these kids and... Yeah, the government loved it, and we're doing it again uh, next year. We we'll do it dope. again, and uh, next year again. So yeah. it's so we've got a two-year extension. So I'll be on the road again. So so does that mean you're not gonna do radio? I can't do radio because this thing is taking so much of your time. I was supposed to start radio in April um, this year. Really? Uh, yes. Where? And, uh, and, <laughs> How and, much? and the reason I couldn't uh, take this radio gig was because I knew I'd be on the road mm. uh, with part two of this DBS tour. So for, you, so for the next two years, I can't do any radio. And you're happy doing that instead of... Because I, I, I don't know if this is a wrong assumption, but isn't radio your first love? Radio is my first love, but because of my first love, I neglected other loves that I had. Hmm. You know what I mean? I've turned down hundreds of like overseas gigs over the last 20 years because I had radio show. Hmm. And in hindsight, I'm like, screw that. I should have taken those gigs. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I was so dedicated to radio that I was like, you know what? Everything else can wait. Mm. I was so dedicated to radio that um, there's an opportunity to work on an album. It can wait. So I'm actually enjoying the freedom that comes with not having to think radio. Or, you're on radio. Yeah. I'm sure right now what's on your mind is, what are we doing later on my show? Like, you're here, but I know your <laughs> mind is thinking there, radio. For sure. I know your mind is thinking, oh yeah, we're on the radio again next week. What are we doing next week? Mm. Radio doesn't allow you an opportunity not to be in radio mindset. Mm. I don't miss that. Yeah. I don't miss that at all. So you stood the test of time. You mentioned 31 years. That's three decades mm -hmm. being on top. And now we're not saying like up and coming. Like sure. from the moment you started popping, you've been popping since. How did you stand the test of time? Honestly, if there was a secret, I'd bottle it and sell it. <laughs> and make a lot of money. But the basics, you know, it's weird. And I don't know if it's just with me. It's weird how... Even as a child, you know if you've been gifted with something special or not. You do. Yeah. And I felt it already from childhood that I don't think I'm normal. Mm. I, I couldn't put my finger on it. But I knew that I had a calling. I didn't know how it would manifest. But I knew my calling was, I'm on this planet to make a difference, to change people's lives to change how people view the world, mm. to change how people view themselves, to minister, if you will. Mm. I just didn't know it would manifest as a career in the media. And the minute I got my radio gig when I was 19, already I knew that, nah, man, I'm actually kicking ass here. Yeah, this is my shit. Dude, I did my first show and I'm like, I'm kicking ass. Like it's better than the drive time host, bro. No, like there's no one on this radio station that can touch, that's what I felt. Yo. First show in. That's what I felt. That's how it is. A year later, I was voted DJ of the year. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. A year, a year later. Mm. And I literally just had like a Saturday show. So already I knew there was something about me. I just didn't know how I was going to turn it into a career. Also because law was here yapping in my yes. ear. Yes. And it's still yapping in my ear because there's still people saying, please come finish your, your LLB. So I knew from the get-go that I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think the many reasons why I am still operating at the level that I'm operating is because I respect what I do. Mm -hmm. And I love what I do so much that I will never, ever disrespect it. 
by showing up late, by not showing up, by showing up drunk, mm. and by being there, but not being there. Mm. So if you hire me, you know I'm there. A hundred percent. But you know I'm also there. Ten. I'm not just physically present. Mm. So I love what I do, dude. I respect what I do. And, 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 and I often preach that your humility will open doors your talent can never touch. Yeah. So it's relationships. You build relationships. You build bridges. You don't burn bridges. You respect people. You show up. You 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 deliver. You you have impact. Be memorable. Yeah. All of that. All of that we can do, but ninety percent of us won't do it. Yeah. And 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 I I you know whenever I meet with Oskido, we actually talk about that, that he put me on when I was nineteen. And we're still doing this to this day. Till this day, man. This coming weekend, we've got gigs up the Yazoo. I mean, we've got, like, it's... It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, but also, I'm not going to say I'm surprised. It's not an accident that I'm here. Like you said, when you had that weird feeling as a child yeah. that you were special, it's manifesting. Not only manifesting. Dude, kick ass at what you do. And what you do will kick ass for you. Mm. That's that's that. It's actually so simple, but it's difficult for people to actually just put it into practice. Yeah, and it's actually easier to be full of shit when you're successful than it is to be humble. Mm. Than it is to realize that you're not bigger than anyone here. You're not a celebrity, dude. There's only two celebrities: Mandela and God. <laughs> Everyone else is just trying to get by and try to get to the next gig. Yeah. So I will never once believe my own hype at the level where it changes how I treat people. It changes how I relate with people. Mm. I'll never be that guy. And that is why I'm still here. And that's why I'll be here next year. Mm. So there's like a ton of gimmicky DJs right now. Half of them will be will have fallen off by the end of the year. Next year, there'll be another new gimmicky lot of DJs. Yeah. They'll find us here mm. and they'll leave us here. So, uh, let me public figure. From yeah, let me just start off by saying that. But what I find is that like, sometimes I'll get like requests for money in my mm, DMs. Mm. Do you get that a lot? I've been getting requests for money for the last probably 25 years. But also, I think what doesn't help is the fact that because my calling is what it is, mm. I literally go out of my way to help people. You see. So through uh, my, my foundation, I mean, we've put over 2,000 kids through tertiary oh, man. education. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, we've paid rent for people, done groceries for people. And people assume because you're in the media, you have money. Sometimes I'll buy groceries for someone with money I can't even afford to buy groceries with. Mm. But I'll do it because I see that they probably need it more than I need the little I have. Mm. And I think that's been one of my big weaknesses. You raised. That I don't know how to say no when I should say no. Yeah. What's been the strangest request you've gotten from like supporters? Um, there's a lady who said, there's a lady in Botswana actually last year who asked me to buy her a Harley Davidson. I think it hey, cost scooter. A, yeah, it cost a quarter of a million uh, um, 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 rands. And she's like, she's always dreamt of being a biker. May I buy her a bike? <laughs> so, yeah. How I and then there's a guy who asked for trucks. He wants to start a trucking business. Can I buy him? It's, 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 it's crazy. Dude, my, who do, you, who do you think you are? My like? DMs are wild. <laughs> like, they're wild. Yeah. Like, right now, my DMs are full of gay dudes <laughs> who think we can hook up. I, I swear to God. My D, there's even one from a guy who says, Where's <laughs> Kelezo? Did he say he's straight, but he likes me? <laughs> My man. My shoot your shot, ma. And I'm paraka. So there's a dude. He's like he's straight, but he liked me and him to hook up. It's just can we keep it on the down low? So that's the level of yeah. it's it's it's, it's wild. Berserk. It's berserk. Yeah. Speaking of social media, um, I'm on your Twitter. Like I see your Twitter every day. Yeah. And you have like solely gym influencer. I'm not a gym influencer. I'm just a guy on a journey. Uh, every day I post a selfie after like running and sweating. Do you, do you know that I'm at my lightest I've been? Probably in 15 years. Really? I'm down to 120 now. Whoa. Yeah. Can we still call you fresh? Uh, you will call me fresh until you die. 
<laughs> so are you, are you do you, are you fit, are you a fitness freak now? Like what, what I, is I, up with this journey? Like? I'm not a fitness freak. Mm. I'm just a dude that doesn't want to have a heart attack or a stroke. Okay. Or or have to deal with the sugar or deal with cholesterol. So I'm on a you only have one body, you look after it. Mm. You know, we service our cars or whatever intervals, but how often do we service our oh, minds? How mm. do we service our bodies? You know, it's this is the only vessel you have. Yeah. And if you're not looking after it, then yeah, I you know, love what, what what must happen, and 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 I know that people, for instance, who hate seeing uh, Lula posting her gym pictures or whatever it is, mm. then don't follow her. Like unfollow me, bro. E- exactly, mm. and and I know for a fact that my posts will inspire one person or ten people, a hundred people at a time, and that's all. That's all I hope to do, basically. Do you still drink liquor? I still drink liquor, but not a lot of it. Okay. Yeah, like I don't drink a lot of liquor because I'm on this journey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm, 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 what I want to do is I want to be performing optimally at every level and every facet in my life for the next 10, 15 years. Okay. And it means you have to put in the work. It, it means you have to be disciplined. It means you have to make sacrifices. Mm-hmm. It means you have to cut people off even. Yep. Because every facet, I mean, whether it's career, whether it's family, if it means you have to cut off a cousin that is toxic, you do that. I'm at a stage where I, all I need is peace, dude. Mm. All I need Number is peace. Number one priority. Number one priority is peace. And I will protect my peace by any means necessary. Like I said, whether it means cutting off family, you do that. Cut off friends, you do that. Sure. You know, be single, you do that. Do whatever it takes to be at, at peace. peace. Dude, I've never been this uh, at peace in my entire life. Your whole life? In my, in my entire life. And uh, kind of when I, like, back when, like, I'm talking, like, when you were my age. Yeah. You were cops at the small of the country. Like, you were touring this whole world, like, you know? And only now are you saying, like, you're at your most peace? I think because... We were slaves to the industry mm. at the time. Often we never even had an opportunity to know that there's flowers to stop to smell. Mm. And I often look at my nine years, 10 years at YFM with a bit of a heartache because we were so busy Yo. shaping popular culture. We forgot to be in the moment. We forgot to be in the moment. It's often when you then look back that you realize that I changed so many things and lives and so much of the popular culture or I shaped so much of the popular culture. But I wasn't even in the moment. You know, you do something and then you move on and let whatever influence it creates happen behind you and you move on to the next thing. I've done that for the last 30 years. It's only now I'm able to slow down and actually enjoy. Dude, I'm enjoying DJing more, I think, over the last two, three years. Really? Than I've done my entire career. What? And I've done, like, big milestone gigs over the last 30 years. The last two, three years for me, dude, you can't, yeah. 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 I love that you've released yourself. Like, when last did you cry? I probably cry every day. Really? Yeah, I cry. There's always something that'll make me cry. It will either be a video that I see or a thought or, you know, the other day um, I was on Tibo Taichu's show with uh, my son Tato, YBF. And, you know, on my way home, I just dropped a tear because mm. I'm just so happy for him in terms of that he's finding his own footing. Mm. Um, that he's, he, he's a blessing of a son because I believe me and his mom were so busy that we often didn't spend the time with him that we should have. We often didn't pay attention to him the way we should have. Yeah. But the fact that he still turned out the way he has, for me, it's, it's God showing off. Yeah. It's God saying that you guys might not have been there for him at a level that you should have been at certain points in your lives, but don't worry, I had you covered. Mm. You know what I mean? So I often, I cry a lot about that. Yeah. That, that he's, he's an incredible man. Look at that. And no Hey, he oh hot, on Cutie. Hi. <laughs> you see me if I was straight, I'd be a daughter in law. Dude, if you were straight, I would have introduced you guys already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so man. so so like I said, so I'm I'm often grateful, especially like I said, for my kids. Mm. So yeah, that brings me to tears all the time. Yeah. Like all the time. Do you feel weird when people call you a legend? 
I don't ever feel weird. Mm. I get why they call me that. Yes. I get why they'll call me a triple OG or whatever else. Mm. But it's 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 the funny thing is in my mind, I'm not done. Like you just got started. Dude. Like um, it's, 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 I wish I could share with you my plans for myself over the next 10 years. Mm. Then you'll understand that I'm actually, I've, I've barely scratched the surface. Mm. And, and yes, I've changed lives, dude. Mm. And I'm in the business of changing lives. And I don't change lives like small fry. Lives that I've changed, I've changed significantly. Uh, I've created millionaires. Come on. I've created uh, careers. I've built careers. I'm a testament to I've, I've helped things. shape mm. what is now a house music economy that feeds people every single day. Mm -hmm. I've been a part of all of that. But I never blow my horn about it because it's part of my calling. You'll never see me, uh, you know, put out a press release and say, I've put over 2,000 kids through school. It's part of my calling. Your calling happens. Your, your calling is not a PR opportunity. Mm. You know what I mean? That yeah. is why I operate quietly in terms of the lives I've changed, the lives that continue to change, the people that continue to show up for. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, what we see. So, so, yeah. And if you were to die today... Um... I'd wake up. <laughs> <laughs> wake up, I'm not done. I'd wake up and say, I'm Dimo, what's going on here? <laughs> you got the wrong guy. <laughs> but like, what are some of the adjectives that you want to leave people with when they describe you? Just one. And I've said this before. Mm. He gave a damn. Mm. Like, he gave... Dude, I give a damn at a level that I sometimes ought not to give a damn. Mm. The people that have wronged me, that I've forgiven in my heart, that I'll continue to love, even if it's from a distance. Mm. Because you've wronged me, it doesn't mean you get to come back. Yeah. But I will forgive you and I will walk off and move on to the next chapter in my life. Would you be a station manager? I don't know if I'd be a station manager, maybe program manager. Okay, so PM. Maybe PM, maybe PM. It's just, it's just managing talent. You guys are work. Eh? <laughs> Sorry, we are work. We are work. So, so I don't know if I have it in me. I wouldn't mind consulting. Okay. Literally just come in, tell them that you're fucking up, you're fucking up. Mm -hmm. you're, this no, is awful. Fix this, yes. fix that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I'd want to have to lead people at that level. Mm. Yeah. I want to talk about things that you've done. Something that you've done that scared you the most? Something that I've done that scared me the most? I think outside of having children mm -hmm. is probably my recent breakup. Really? Yeah. It frightened you? Not that it frightened me. Let me tell you why it scared me. Mm. Because from the age of 14 till now, I've been in a relationship all Back to the back. Time. Yeah. Dang. Back to back. Literally, it ends, you move on to the next one. Mm. It ends, another one happens. Or it ends because of one and then... Yeah, you, you jump on to the next. Like, exactly. So, mm. the thing that scares me is I have never had an opportunity not to be in a relationship. Mm. So, the last six weeks for me, have actually been probably the most exciting, scariest time of my life. Mm. Because I don't know it. What should, you don't know what to I do. I don't know it. <laughs> I don't know not having to account to someone. Not having to say, hey, I've gotten here safely, or I'm okay. Or not having to explain why I didn't call. Or not having to explain where I am. Mm. I've never had that since I was 14, dude. Damn, bro. So, so the last six weeks, like I said, have been scary yeah. at that level where it's you and your thoughts. You wake up next to yourself. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and, and I think what makes it scarier is that I broke up with someone that I genuinely believe I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Mm. And I still believe that's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. Yeah, so are but, you, yeah. But um, because things happened the way they did mm. and i'm not even point fingers i think we we i think we both fucked up mm. um to i'll put it in the book i'll put the details in the book you know what i mean but she's supposed to be on radio soon so yeah. i think <laughs> yeah so so yeah i think i think choosing that i don't want to be in a relationship for now for now, it's probably yeah. the scariest thing i've decided for myself in a while because you haven't done it in a while and and but i also now understand why white folk will talk about you must date before you commit 
because dating is what HR do. We'll interview five people and decide who we're hiring. Exactly. Often we jump into the next relationship based on whatever it's based on. Mm. You know, he's got nice eyes. She's got a nice ass. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, she makes me laugh. Mm. But do we really want to be with that person for the rest of our lives? Mm. Or are we just settling at the time? So I now get it when people say date first before deciding. Like we, 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 we audition everything else, but the person except we want to spend. Ex ex exactly. Jo. Like how does that make sense? This is my girlfriend. She's here. Hey. Now thank you more tissue and muto and naki king. Okay, no fair. I'm stressed, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but Uncle Fresh has been so nice talking. I still had so much to ask you. But so ask, um, we're not done. Just talk. I have to go. Tell them you're on the way. <laughs> Sorry, she's supposed to be on radio. No, no, soon, I have so. to leave. I need to leave. <laughs> there was still so much. Can't we do like a, a second part of this? Yeah. We, we, we will do a part two. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, but thank you so much. Wow, what a week, what an interview. And uh, from myself, guest presenter of the day, I get a good last episode for Jara eh? uh, This is the last episode for this year. Yeah. But um, yeah, maybe let's do a part two to yeah. start the year. Please. We're going to do a part two to start the year next year. I hope you really, really enjoyed this episode. From the love of my life, my radio dad, my homie, DJ Fresh and myself, Lula Diva. We'll check you next time. Just so you know, guys, now I'm not done. So she's going to leave. Give me the questions and then I'll answer them into camera. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, Uncle Fresh. Wait. Uh, this is... Ah! What, what a week. What a week. Celebrity Days. Yes, sir. I love it. I love you. Love you. <laughs> Now you understand why I love her so much. She's such a vibe. Like, such a vibe. Such a vibe. This was so nice. Part two, again next week. Now, thanks for watching uh, another episode of Wow, What a Week, coming to you from Amped Studios, downtown um, Johannesburg. We're part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out to Pezulu Works, Trevor, and your entire team. Thanks for the cinematography. You guys make us look good. If you pop it in post, <laughs> but you guys make us look good. Uh, they even do weddings, guys. If you want your wedding to look like a movie, Pezulu works. W-O-R-X. Pezulu works because the only way up is what works. So please hit up Pezulu Works. Shout out to Otis the Flow Fraser. Uh, he does all of our audio imaging. Press the button there, uh, Lulu. Any button, eh? Press the button there. <laughs> Uh, no, no, you're being an ass now. Why are you pressing your donkey? I didn't donkey? expect that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an... This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. Politics. Politics. So if you need imaging done, Otis the Flow Fraser will get that quality imaging done for you. So shout out to Otis the Flow Fraser. We love you, my dude. Uh, shout out to the team, Keleso Mudisa King and Kuvesh Mohan. And I think most importantly to you for being a part of this. Uh, please subscribe, like, share, uh, make uh, WhatsAppable um, um, clips for your gran. But uh, yeah, let's spread the word, man. Thank you so much for being a part of The Magic. You can email waw at um, africapodcastnetwork.com. Until next year, have an incredible rest of 2023 in spite of yourselves.